right. Gracious God, be with us today in our joy and sorrow, anticipation and exhaustion. Lead us to your life-giving water so that we may be renewed to carry out your transformational work in the world. So sing, wash, O God, our sons and daughters. God, giver of life, we gather today acknowledging the harm we have done to your creation and one another. We pollute the rivers and endanger the creatures within them, rather than honoring their sacredness. We seek control and have power over the waters rather than respecting their might. We overlook the many enslaved and vulnerable lost in the waters, rather than acknowledging our role in this violence. We focus on our own desires rather than seeing how they impact the world around us. We come yearning to be refreshed and replenished by the water of life so that we might seek ways to honor you and better all of creation. Forgive us for the injury we have caused. Inspire us in seeking new ways to participate in and with your creation. Renew us with your life-giving water. Amen. God invites us to come to the water in our entirety, with our flaws and questions, gifts and joys. 
May water remind us of God's promise at our baptism. We are forgiven, loved children of God. May this promise help us strive to be better stewards of God's love with one another and all of creation. Amen. We'll sing together, I am your mother. throughout our sacred text, our scriptures, are images of abundant flowing streams of cool, clear, refreshing water. We're going to focus on three of them in this service. From Genesis, at the very beginning of creation, the cradle of civilization is held within the nurture of four great rivers and streams, Kishan, Gihan, the Tigris, and the Euphrates. These are not mythical water systems. They continue today as part of the Fertile Crescent of Asia and the Middle East. It is from this extensive watershed that Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait receive their waters and the possibilities of an abundant life. And it is in this watershed where most people believe life emerged from the primordial soup because it is a region of vast natural beauty and abundance in an otherwise dry and desert region. Exactly the sort of place that God's heart seems to delight in. Places where rivers flow and life is abundant. Places where natural resources provide all that is needed for life well lived. Places where the heart of God seems to dwell more richly. When God looks at something and calls it good, this is no small matter. As the scriptures tell the story of life beginning out of the fertile crescent, we hear God say over and over again, it is good, it is very good. God is passionately in love with this place and all that emerges from its abundance. We must remember these origin stories. We must remember that the world and everything in it resides in the heart of God. And God loves it all passionately. 
Even while we dam up rivers and form alliances around water rights, causing wars and conflicts and damage to God's beloved creation, God sees what God has declared good. God sees God's beloved human race, whom God called good, very good. God sees how this human race damages what God passionately loves. And God's heart breaks. God's heart breaks. Humans have been doing this ecological damage for eons. And as God's heart continues to break, God continues to remind us that the waters still flow and the possibilities for redemption and restoration are still within reach. Time and time again, humanity has violated the land with war and disobedience and pride. In the midst of one of these times, God comes to the prophet named Ezekiel and gives him a vision. A vision of what a restored land would and could look like. Of what God could give them back if they remembered whose people they are and whose land they inhabit. Just like the ecological system of the Fertile Crescent where life began, the people of Israel are promised through Ezekiel the gift of water, flowing abundantly, teeming with a rich variety of fish so that the anglers from the region will be able to feed their households and make a living. Fruit trees and wild plants lining the banks that will provide food and medicine, never failing because the waters coming from the throne and the temple of God for the nurture of the nations will make it so. The scriptures declare wherever the river flows, everything will live. God is so much in love with the world and everything in it that God continues to restore and recreate it, continues to redeem it. This tells us so much about God. Not only that God loves all of creation, but that God loves us and wants us to live in creation that is abundant and full of life, a creation that we can enjoy and share life with. So it is so dismaying when we see Christians, particularly Christians, who have these sacred texts and these rich stories of God's deep and passionate love for creation. It is so dismaying when we don't do what makes God's heart glad. When we vote against those who would do all within their power to assure the earth's protection. When we ignore our own need to care for the land when they, we disparage those for whom care of the land and all it contains is their life work. Hearing Christians making fun of environmentalists and ecological act activists breaks my heart, and I think it breaks the heart of God. Of course, no one is without faults or biased views. Even environmentalists and activists can get it wrong but to disparage their work because they don't have all the answers is, I think, shameful, and it breaks God's heart. But to disparage the work, but how much better to join hands and work alongside each other to bring about the redemption that God envisions for God's beloved creation? How much better to do something that brings gladness to God's heart? And we know from our scriptures that when people work together, it's like balm to God's heart. Our scriptures even describe it as a stream flowing from the holy mountain in Zion. Hear these amazing words from Psalm 133. Look at how good and pleasing it is for God's people to live as one. It is like expensive oil poured over the head. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon streaming down onto the mountains of Zion. See how much working together as people of God delights God's heart? We can, with the blessing and help from God, form our own little river of redemption and restoration when we work together. We can join in passionately to the, do the work of co-creating with God with each other instead of fighting each other and making fun of each other and bullying each other. We can be part of God's rivers and streams of righteousness and redemption for all of creation. 
You see, that's what's so amazing about this journey we are on. We don't just, to get, don't just get to benefit from God's passionate love for us. We also get to participate in loving what God loves and helping God's love and heart be glad. As I explained to the kids on Wednesday, keeping our rivers and streams and waters clean isn't just something good to do. It's so much deeper than that. Doing what we can through our boat, our actions, our attitudes, and our policy support to keep our waterways clean and safe for all, I believe makes God's heart happy. How would your day be today if you knew that you did something that made God's heart happy? The God who loves you unconditionally. Marcus Borg in his essay in Morrow Ground reminds us that God's passion for the world includes its future. It's never about the ending of the world. No matter how destructive humans can get, God always is looking toward a future redemption of the world. And so we come to the last passage for this meditation. Another vision of a river in the, in the book of Revelation. This one coming from a redeemed and renewed earth that is the vision we can all embrace if we decide that our life work will be about making the heart of God happy. Just like the vision of creation and the vision of Ezekiel, a water flows through the land, clear as crystal. On either side of the river, trees with abundant fruit flourish. Food for the whole kingdom of God leaves for medicine for the healing of the nations. Is this a vision, a promise that will be fulfilled, a foretaste of heaven, or the possibilities of what the kingdom of God on earth could be like if we all took our life's work, being passionately in love with the earth as God is, being passionate co-creators of God with God for the healing of the nations? As we leave our season of creation for another year and move into the season of Thanksgiving, let us not act as if we did our duty for these last four Sundays. Let us not act as if we are done with it for another year. Let us instead embrace our ministry of God's work in the world and every day find those ways we can care for the earth and thereby make the heart of God happy. God who loves us unconditionally. May our lives add to the stream of life that brings gladness to the heart of God. Let us pray. God invites us to come to the water in our entirety with our flaws and questions, gifts, and joys. May water remind us of God's promise at our baptism. We are forgiven, loved children of God. May this promise help us strive to be better stewards of God's love with one another and all of creation. God, our comfort and healer, hear our prayers. Renew our relationship with you and all your creation. To disturb us from our complacency so that we can become agents of healing. Help us to live into your promise of new life as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our loving God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the dominion, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let's sing, Shall We Gather at the River? Yes, sir. 
You are a sacred part of God's creation. God cares for you and is with you in times of abundance and scarcity. Just as water flows endlessly from the river of life, go and spread God's love to all of creation. Make God's heart glad, so that in all you do, you can bring glory to God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Thank you.